Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is uh, Arthur Bergeron. I don't always sound this funny. Um, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us, and so everybody gets to pick what they like. I really like doing elder law, so that's why I do it. The, um, this show is not, though, about elder law. It is really about my friends Frank and Mary, who, if you've seen any of my presentations, they're the make-believe couple that I always talk about with their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And, they, and I always tell people what their goal in life is they want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. So if you can identify with that and you kind of like where you are, the question for Frank and Mary on this show is if they don't want to just be in their house, they want to be in their community. So who should they know about and what programs should they know about that will allow them to stay in their, in their community until they die and be safe and be not embarrassed if they've got some memory problems or, and, and have some place that if they've got issues, they can talk to somebody. Which actually leads me to today. So I have this wonderful co-host whom actually no one knows me, everyone knows her, Kelly Burke, who has been here for a long time now as the Senior Center Director. Um, and I, I kind of begged her to be the co-host because she really does know everybody and the programs you need to know um, here in Northboro. And she always finds these great guests. And today she's got a great guest. So Kelly, can you just kind of talk about who we, so who we got? Sure. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to introduce Jocelyn Earhart, who is our outreach coordinator. She's one of three full-time staff at the Senior Center, including me. And that's exciting. That's exciting. And she's the outreach coordinator. She is. She also wears the hat of volunteer coordinator. As which well. is which is also very exciting. It is. Right. But we're not going to we're not going to talk too much about volunteer coordinator today. We're going to talk a lot about outreach coordinator. Yes. Because and I think we were talking about this a little bit, a little bit before um, Jocelyn. You know, when I hear that term outreach coordinator. In the private sector, a lot of times, that's a, a disguised term and it means marketing. So there are people that are out selling, which is really not kind of what an outreach coordinator is in a, in a senior center. So can you start off by just talking about, so how did you get here exactly? You know, did you grow, grow up in Northboro or are you an outlander, right? And what did you do to make you interested in this? And then talk to us a little bit about what outreach coordinator, a coordinator is. Sure. Um, That's a lot. Yeah, well, thank you, Arthur. And then um, after that, we'll talk about volunteer court. No, no, no just <laughs> outreach court. Um, I have lived here about 20 years. I moved here from Colorado, um, and I went to graduate school in Colorado um, and worked with the Gerontology Institute at the university and kind of rolled into working with elders from there, just continued. Once I came out here, I was really fortunate to get a job at the Needham Senior Center doing mm -hmm. outreach and enjoyed it very much. It just gave me a, a wide opportunity to interact with resources and services and, and people and was really thrilled when an opening developed at the Northboro Senior Center. Um, I had enjoyed the Needham Senior Center, but living in the, this area, it was just a That's great a opportunity to cut my commute. <laughs> right, Needham's, Needham's a, a wonderful community, but Yeah, it it's is very nice, yeah. and it was very yeah. supportive. Um, but this turned out to be a, a very supportive array, situation as well. Um, and you've been here for a while now, because I kind of, so for me, I'm, so, I'm not that I'm new to the Senior Center, <laughs> but it's like as long as I've been going, which is several years now, you've always, you've always been there. So. You've been doing it for a while. I right? have. Yeah, I, I um, came to the position in Northboro in 2008 when mm -hmm. we were still at the Center Drive uh, location mm -hmm. and then moved um, up to the Barefoot uh, Road location, which has changed everything, the way we do everything. Um, so that's been a really great opportunity. So, so, so you know the answers to all this stuff, but I'm going to ask. <laughs> So what does an outreach coordinator do kind of ex exactly, you know? Is it, is it, if you can just kind of talk about okay, what you do and, and even kind of some of the situations, the kinds of things that you really kind of get asked and what you kind of need to know about. Because the, go the goal is really for people to understand kind of no matter what the question, they should be, you're a sensible person to start off by talking to, you know? Yeah, I, well, outreach yeah. is, um, a very broad uh, service or program and so sometimes I think it is hard for people to really understand what it's about but 
people of any age with aging related concerns in the community can access outreach. Um, it doesn't have to be an older resident. It can be somebody who's concerned about their older neighbor or a parent elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh. yeah, it could be, you know, somebody who lives in Northboro, um, is, you know, um, a younger adult and is concerned about their parents in another community even. But just the fact where, you know, the connection is... And can you then is, kind of connect them to the senior, whoever the senior services where, are, wherever they are? Yeah. Now, do you get the flip of that very often? Because I know a lot of, so a lot of my clients, I mean, they've been here forever. Um, but like my kids, they're all over. The kids are all over. And, and sometimes they're, wor and they're worried. So do you get calls often from like somebody from out of town saying, you know, do you know? We do, and actually, it's not uncommon this time of year after people have gotten together for Thanksgiving or uh, the holidays to get those kinds of phone calls. They've, you know, people have gotten reunited for a period of time, maybe come to visit and see their parents' car or conditions in the house, and you know, red flags start to pop up. So. We do get those kinds of calls, and um, it's it's just not unusual this time of year to get kind of a little bit of a spike in that. That's really interesting. That's yeah. Really, and, and so what? And then what do you do? So a person calls, and certainly I've heard that from folks. They've been away. Yeah. I had a, I had a case in um, <clears throat> Nantucket where where there was a, a niece that would call. The, the folks were from New Jersey, they'd moved to Nantucket. They didn't have any family on Nantucket, but this, this woman from, from New York would call and, and they would literally say, oh, you know, we're really enjoying the sunrise at the at uh, Sia Sconset on one of the beaches, or we're really enjoying the sunset at Madiket on the other side of the island. She didn't realize it was because they were living in the car. They had, they had hoarded their way out of their house and they were at this point primarily living in the car, right? And, but who, you know, who knew, right? Yeah. Unless you're kind of connected, right? Yeah, that's that's an extreme situation, and you know we do, people do come to outreach in crisis, but we really hope that people come to us before then, right. um, just when they're even thinking and starting to plan. Yeah. The idea is that outreach is available to people who need information and resources, kind of tailored to their own needs and that will also advocate for them um, with those same services. Me, a lot of times I help people with paperwork. When you're dealing with these kinds of life-altering issues, just the paperwork can put you over the edge. So, a yeah. yeah, it's a lot of paperwork, it's daunting, uh, you know, a lot of legalese, just confusing, and people are afraid to do it wrong. So. We, when we sit down together, a lot of times it just goes better. And uh, a lot of times will people bring it, almost like bring in their paperwork with you and say, like, I can't figure out this Medicare thing or I can't figure out, and then you just kind of go through it with them? Sure. I mean, you know, Shine is available at the Senior Center to help specifically with Medicare-related issues, but, yeah. Um, yeah, people will bring in items that they have questions about. But the other thing about outreach is that I can go to someone's home. I can meet them oh. at home. I can, you know, get out of the senior center, kind of extend the reach of the senior center, much like our van program does. It gets out there yeah. and brings the senior center to people who might not come in. Uh, so uh, I can go out and meet people at their home. Um, it's a different perspective, uh, but I think it's really beneficial. And it, it might be a very clarifying perspective exactly. too. Exactly. If, if they're going to it. And yeah. now I have some other, you don't mind my talking. Not know? at all. And I'm trying not to sound too <laughs> gurgly. Um, but before we continue, can you also mention so if they are calling, so what? who do they call? What number do they call? Sure. Is, People that are have questions about outreach or want to make an appointment, just all they need to do is call the senior center. It's 508 393 50 Three five, is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's good. That's good. good. We'll call that's each very good. You know ourselves. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, I yeah. understand. It's like looking at your cell phone. Like, who am I? Who <laughs> yeah, am I? Right. Exactly. And we no. always have somebody, a volunteer, that answers the phone mm -hmm. um, during 
business hours. So somebody and is there like an email also, or is it just a phone? Do there's you really need to call? an email also. Long, long email. Yeah, it's quite long. So um, we may not do that, but what we'll do is we'll have a banner mm -hmm. for this show so that people can, if, you know, if they want to write it down or if they've got a question, they can call. Yeah. Now, can, can we go back to the what you were what you were talking about? So you get calls after Thanksgiving, and once again, I hear these, right? Yeah. And they just oh, we just saw my and dad. Ugh, things aren't going quite. It doesn't. It isn't quite the same as what they said when they were talking over the phone during the year, right? Yeah. And here are some issues, and maybe there are some memory loss issues, or maybe there's some other things. So what do you do? What what you know, they call? They're far away. What do you do? Well, you try to do some something of an assessment of the situation. You know, get input from the caller. Try to meet with the people that they're calling about. Gather information. So maybe you'd actually call them and just see if you can stop in. Yeah, I really. Um, I really like to visit people, get together with them. Uh, a lot of times people are t hesitant about coming to the senior center, but you know, a one-on-one -on -one, um, can work a lot better. Right. Uh, so just try to gather information about the situation and the concerns that have been raised. Uh, and, and when you stop at a house that way, and you must, try to, you must call ahead and then try. Sure. Typically, what is the response? Do you find that people are, are really kind of defensive about this or hesitant about this? Yeah, I think it's or, a mixed response. Yeah. Um, a lot of times people will, you know, be very open about it um, and we get, have the opportunity to talk. They might be a little bit less open about the idea of opening their home to services and that kind of thing. So it's definitely a process. Um, it's not something that just happens, uh, you know, overnight or easily. Uh, but I, I think once the contact is made, then we can kind of keep a presence and even if it's not often, just, you know, do kind of a reminder, check in periodically. And just stop by. Yeah. And, and, if, and say, they, say they decided, say it's Frank and Mary, and one of them has got some memory issues and Frank's been kind of really, say Mary's got some problems, Frank's been killing himself, right? Not yeah. telling anybody, closing the shades, you know, we don't want to be bothering the neighbors. And finally he decides, oh, maybe it would really help me so that I don't drop dead, right, if yeah. we get some services in. What, what, can, what, can you, what can be done in those, case, in those kinds of cases? A lot cases? of times it's more than people expect, uh, which is the yeah. good thing. It's yeah. hard to know without talking to people, but, uh, you know, after gathering information about finances and, um, you know, how they're managing things, just the day-to-day -day things, mm -hmm. how they actually manage certain tasks, mm -hmm. um, we can start to identify their options a little bit more. It may be contacting Bay Path Elder Services, the... Um, Bay Path Elder Services, what's that? that that's the Aging mm -hmm. Services Access Point for mm -hmm. our region. Um, and so that's not a private sector thing, it's a... It's a no, they have a contract really with the help. state to do assessments and provide case management for a range of services. And once getting people hooked up with BayPath can be the start of a very long-term um, relationship in which services uh, kind of come and go for that person and support them in their home. Because I suppose, well, like we, we, we both of us might, you know, Getting older is like when you're a little kid growing up. I mean, it's a change time. You know, we have this kind of long middle period, which is kind of like a plateau, but then people change as they get older. So re really having that kind of constant check-in, this must be, a real, must be a real deal, you know, to kind of follow people. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's really nice from the standpoint of the senior center to that people allow us to have that kind of involvement with them. And, you know, one of my goals is to really provide them with caring and involved service. So, um, yeah, I'm really, I, I find it an honor to be able to do that. And I, I'm sorry, Kelly. I just, just a couple things yeah. that I think yeah. people should know too. Um, when they talk to Jocelyn, it's completely confidential. So um, it's just between them. And I think people find too, there are options that we don't know about, like everything else. Aging is kind of a maze and there's a lot right. of stuff out there. Jocelyn there. can kind of, 
Excuse minimize me. that that maze and and get you know services or resources and it's always up to the person what they decide to accept as services as well it's not jocelyn doesn't go in and prescribe but she offers those things to, yeah to and it's so. not and for a lot of people it's not even about in-home services it mm -hmm. might be about making them aware of fuel assistance that mm -hmm. helps them save hundreds of dollars every winter oh, so you have to be the fuel assistance person too? yes mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, and then also, you know, the property tax abatements that are available You're the in property. North. Yeah. Well, I I do that in coordination right. with the assessor's office, but right. people just making people aware of these options can That'll drastically change. change, you know, their outlook for whether they stay in their home or not. I think th those two are huge. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot for a lot of people that I that I see, other than the food bill, the tax bill is the biggest bill they have. And they yeah. often have no idea that they actually have a way, you know, mm -hmm. that the gov state yeah, government has provided some ways to help treat them deal with that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And the fuel assistance still is a mystery to me. How, how, how that works is like a complete mystery. So if, if people had a, were, were concerned even at this point, it being almost the end of the year, about fuel assistance, is it like too late to? Oh no, to talk that to that them? program, it's a seasonal program, and applications are accepted till the end of April. Oh. So if people are interested, they yeah. just need to call the senior center and talk to me, and um, you know, I after a few questions, um, we can determine whether or not that's the best way to go. And can you give folks just a sense of of who might be eligible? Because I know that I think a lot of people hear about fuel assistance, and they're like. I must need to be really poor in order to get fuel assistance. You know, they kind of have no idea. Well, yeah, you're, so that's you're going to stump me, but it's sixty percent uh, of the median income. So oh, the median income, median of median family income. Well, yeah, it's you know for single, they have yeah. it calculated for yeah. a single person, yeah. a couple, um, you know, for different sized families. So it, it's, I think. I mean, it that really applies to a lot of people, and if they're not eligible for that program, yeah. it's possible there's another program that might be able to work with them. So, it, it's I think it's worth checking into. Um, I, I just think people aren't aware that these things are out there, and it's worth asking about. Right, or you, you kind of know they're out there, but you're like, where do I start? You know, exactly. you're in the, you know, there is no more phone book, right? Mm -hmm. And you, it, and right. there's. I, one of the hardest parts about being old, as opposed to being a kid, you know what you do when you're a kid, you go to school, and you're right there, and, all, and that's it, right? Yeah, but that's when you're your old, point of contact. There's mm -hmm. all these different programs, and you just don't know where to start. Yeah. So the, the bottom line message is that they should always start with you. Yeah, that's I'd very, like to think that that's, very, that's yeah. good advice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we too. really want to make you know, this an easy point of contact for people, and then help them reach out. And, and Kelly, from your perspective, as I think we had mentioned when we were talking before the show, you had had two part-time folks, right, mm -hmm. that were doing this, and now you've right. kind of merged that into mm -hmm. full-time. And so, and it's and certainly, I bet since you've come to the, the new senior center, I bet the total traffic you get has really grown. Yeah, it really has. Because when I go there now, it's just constant. I mean, I just tell people, if you, like, if you've gone, right? Because typically the reaction is, oh, no, those are all those old people. I'm mm. like, trust me. You know, people is, are very active that come to the senior center doing a right. lot of different things. And I mean, they're dull though, aren't they really dull? There's a I dull heard, men's group, but that's, dull men's group. but that's an international club now. I didn't name that one. So, I didn't know but that those it was are very interesting guys yeah. and very, um, very inquisitive, and they very have a great, a great meeting every Wednesday morning at ten o'clock. I just love the name. And so, <laughs> and so when when you when you're, I just wanted to ask you about, from your own perspective, so. Mm -hmm. How do you see things going? If, if in in the best of all worlds, I mean, you've grown a lot of things. You've grown mm -hmm. the the, uh, the cafe from small to kind of one person to now you know, you've really grown it, and in, in, in many ways self supporting, right? It is self supporting. How yes. how do you see the, this this piece? And is there anything, as far as you're concerned, that's kind of missing to this point that you'd really like to see there, or just 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 as your sense, or or have you seen things from other senior centers that you think would just be terrific? I'm just wondering. Well, well, as you know, we've done some work with dementia Tremendous. and yeah, um, a lot. making a dementia-friendly community. We have Daybreak now, um, which is a respite for caregivers and, and good activities for um, for folks that have dementia. And can you just talk about once again for folks who haven't stopped in? Can you just talk about what that what what how that program works? 
That's a grant program that we have with, um, that we share with Hudson and Malbro. It was uh, Janice Long, the director in Hudson, that came up with the, the, um, the daybreak concept. Yep. Um, she shared it with Malbro and Northboro, and now we have three days a week where people can access that in those three communities. And um, if, if you had a loved one that had dementia and you were interested yep. in the program, you can call any of the senior centers and we can tell you more about it. And, and it's really for folks who have got perhaps maybe have some memory loss or yes. who have a caregiver who's got memory loss. Yep. And that's been a very really successful That's been successful. Program. And, and so, again, that could be something that someone would talk to Jocelyn about. And um, she could, you know, just and tell she them could, if, and, could, and she could start connecting folks in. Right, right, yeah. for resources. I mean, I think in some ways it's um, one of the best kept secrets, outreach. Um, right. But jo you know, I hear all the time people telling me how great Jocelyn is and what a great resource it is for the senior center. And I think I just want people to know that that we're there for it's a kind of your answer to aging. And, and and from your perspective, Jocelyn, can you see any particular things that you'd want to be in the future? Can you see these programs evolving? And from what I'm sure you communicate with 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 outreach folks from all around the state, right? Is the is the job changing? Are the are the Demands that you find that you get calls for cha changing. Yeah, I, I think just like the aging, the population that's aging is changing. So are the situations that come up that we're dealing with. It, um, there's certainly, you know, changes where people need a, a broader variety of housing. I, so I think right. we're going to, yeah, we're. I think we're really going to see a lot of changes and. Uh, there is a, a group of outreach workers that, you know, meets in each ASAP region, and it, it's really beneficial to talking about those kinds of things and identifying resources and staying current and just trading stories. That yeah, must be, must be mm -hmm. a very entertaining. It's very helpful. Not dull. Mm -hmm. That yeah. must not be a dull meeting. Yeah. So I just want. I know we only have a few minutes left, but I try to at the end of each show have Kelly just talk about kind of what's coming from your perspective. What's going on at the Senior Center over the next, because we try to do these shows once a month. Mm -hmm. right, what's going on? Well, right at the end of this month, so I'm not sure if it's going to be before um, yeah. we air for this, well, but we have okay. an almost New Year's Eve party Almost New Year's on Eve. And uh, it's, December and, 31st. And it's because it's like almost Christmas. No, right, but, yeah. but, it's so countdown. I, I bet that show will be on, so that's good. And, countdown and to noon instead of midnight. Countdown to noon, and it's and at the Senior Center. At the Bistro, Vicki and at Carolyn are making a, a wonderful brunch menu for that. So. We have uh, a few tickets left. Yeah. Um, and into the new year, oh, we're adding. Oh, and it's a ticketed item. So, it is. so if they want a ticket, they have to talk to you. They have they to have call. To call the senior center. And we and they the have ticket. that number. Okay. Yes. What else? Um, in the in the new year, we're doing some Photoshop um, computer classes. Photoshop. We have Photoshop, and um, Mimi, our computer instructor, is there every Thursday afternoon starting in January. So yes. if you've got old photos like we all do, and you want to make some corrections to them if they're crumpled and things like yeah. that, or if you'd like to make albums or you just like, want to get them organized, Mimi's there. That She's is so wonderful cool. at that. And I, I'd like to take it, but I have to be in the office. But so. you have to be. So, and that's Thursdays? Every Thursday afternoons, Photoshop afternoons. Starting at? Starting afternoon. the first Thursday After in January. <laughs> I get it. And it's just, and it's just for, the, for the whole app. So literally, you can show up any time during the afternoon. Yeah. That's We'd like great. to know that you're coming because we yeah. have um, yeah. 12 computers that we can use yeah. in the lab. Yeah. Um, so we'd ask for pre-registration on that. Um, we have Technology Tuesdays with the um, Algonquin students that come up. So if you, for Christmas, get one of those <laughs> Things, iPads or like, an e-reader. What the hell is this? You yeah, think, right. yeah. Um, we explain. go to the experts, and the experts are the students <laughs> from Algonquin. That's great. So that's great. That's on, on Tuesdays, and I don't have those exact dates for January, yep. but we do have our newsletter. The newsletter's on the website for the town. So That's terrific. Yep. Well, thank you very much. Thank Jocelyn, you. it's just really interesting. I think for a lot of people that might have these kinds of questions, they had no idea there was somebody they could actually talk to about this stuff, to, to know that this is and to see who you are, it's just really important. Oh, well, thank so, you. Thanks for the opportunity. No, thank you very much, Kelly. Always a pleasure. Thank you, have a, have a wonderful holiday, you folks. You too. Uh, so and thank you very much for watching, uh, and we'll see you in 2019 uh, with the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northbrook. Thank you very much. <laughs>